Now let's shift our attention to the basics of CLI or command line interface. In order to access a router or a switch, it doesn't matter whether it's a switch or a router, it's the same way to connect. You have two ways of doing it. You can either physically do it or you can do it virtually. What do I mean by that? Let me explain in a moment, but let me explain a couple of other elements along the way first. Cisco runs iOS, whether it's a Cisco router or a Cisco switch, they run iOS, which stands for Inter Network Operating System. Once you buy a router or a switch, you gotta do something with it, right? Otherwise, out of the box, it's not gonna do anything for you. You can connect things up to it, but nothing is gonna happen. You have to configure things for it to actually work. This is where CLI comes in command line interface. And what we do is we connect to that device and we start configuring it. Well, you might ask, well, how do you do that? How do you connect? Well, I'm glad you asked. There's multiple different ways of doing it. What I wanna draw your attention to is a couple of different types of ports. First, the console port. See this console cable right here, as you can see, the RJ45 piece of it interconnects into this console port. This is the RJ45 connector plugging into the console port. And then the serial connection, we take it and plug it into our laptop. If we had an older laptop, a lot of the newer laptops don't have that. What we can do then is we can get an adapter that converts from serial to USB, plug that in, then install drivers for it, and then it will recognize that we're connected via serial cable. And then our laptop or desktop would be able to connect. There's also the auxiliary port. So with the auxiliary port, we can have a modem plugged into it, like a dial-up modem, which is very, very old school now. If you guys remember back in the day when we had modems, you still have them for out-of-band management or OOB, meaning if our network were to go down for some reason, we can still access our device remotely. This is for remote access. So that's the auxiliary piece of it. And then either via the fast ethernet or the serial ports, we have the ability to connect virtually to our device. So here of the auxiliary and console, we're physically connecting, even though with auxiliary, that's also virtual too. But with console, you're physically, like literally have a physical cable plugged in to our device. Whereas with fast ethernet and serial port, we're gonna configure IP addressing, which is logical addressing. And then I may have a router here in San Jose, California, but I could be halfway across the world, somewhere in Sydney, Australia. And from there, I can connect to my router that is physically sitting in San Jose. Well, how is that possible? It's because I have configured virtual access to it using Telnet or SSH. We'll talk about that in a moment. But when you connect via the console cable, you have to use what's called a terminal software on your machine. So on Apple, on Mac, you literally have an application called Terminal. You open that up and you can start configuring these parameters down here at the bottom. 9600 baud rate, eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit, and no flow control. These are parameters that you have to set up once you're connecting via the console cable through the console port to your router or a switch. And that's it. This is how you connect physically to your router. We'll also talk about virtual configuration, plus I will do some hands-on for you so you get to learn how all that works. Before we actually touch the CLI, I wanna bring your attention to a couple of different things. When we look at the command line interface of the router, the first thing we're gonna look at is we have a couple of different modes. The first thing we're gonna get when we log into a router or a switch is we're gonna get this prompt right here, which some people call right arrow or greater than sign. It's up to you, whatever you prefer calling it, but this is what we have. In this mode, we're limited to commands like ping, very limited show commands. We can type in enable. It means we have admin access, et cetera, et cetera. But everything is very, very limited here. The next level up is the privilege exec mode. Here, the prompt changes in the CLI. What you'll notice then is that the symbol will change from the greater than sign to the pound sign or hash sign. That indicates to us that we're in privileged exact mode. This is where we can type in all the user commands, debug commands, we can reload the router, configure it, etc., etc. One level deeper is the global configuration mode. Here, 
the prompt changes to config hash or the pound sign. And here we can do things like host name, enable secret, IP route, a lot of the configuration goes here. We can go a level deeper into the interface configuration mode displayed by config dash if and the hash sign in front. And finally, we can have config router mode where we go ahead and, and configure things like the routing protocol and all that. So this is how hierarchically, as you can see, we have different options. We start at the exec mode, then we get to the privilege exec mode, then global configuration mode, and then we keep going levels deeper and deeper. Now I think at this point, you guys are ready to go ahead and do a quick deep dive into the basics of CLI and can't wait to get my hands dirty and you should do the same thing. As I'm typing in the commands on my end, you should do the same on yours because not, you know, you can easily find tools like Packet Tracer that is available for free. And that's exactly what I'm using here. So here's a switch and packet tracer, very similar to how you would look at an actual switch. And what's being represented here right now, why the CLI is as if you're connected through a console connection physically connected to that switch. And what we can do here, this is, if you guys recall, called a user exec mode. Here we have very limited access. We can run commands like show version. This is an interesting command, shows us a couple of things. Here it shows us that this is a Catalyst 2960 platform. It shows us that this is the base Ethernet MAC address of this device right here. It's giving us the exact model number of this box. Once again, same information that we had up here. This is actually the part number of this switch. So you can literally go ahead and, and buy this switch with this part number if you needed an exact type of switch in your environment. And it also shows us the type of software version that we're running. We're running 12.2 and the software image that we're running, it's a LAN base image. You also have more advanced capabilities as well, but the LAN base image gives you the most basic capabilities you can get at a layer two level on this switch. We really can't do much in the user exec mode. So we're better off going to the next mode, which is called the privilege exec mode. So notice the prompt changed from the greater than symbol to a pound symbol or a hash symbol. Here we have administrative access to the box and we can pretty much do anything. But things get more interesting when we get to the next level. So I want to show you a couple of things here. If I say config and I hit tab on my keyboard, it automatically completed the entire command. Even though I had just typed in config, it meant all the way to configure. And what we can do next is type in question mark, space question mark. That means is now we can see what the next potential command could be. So here we'll type in terminal. Once we type in config terminal, notice the prompt changes to config pound sign. So now that means we're in a global configuration mode. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.